Hey everybody, welcome to the Command Valley. I'm your host Landon, bringing to you today another deck tech. Today's deck tech is going to be on Yark the Desecrated. But before I get into the list, just some quick channel promotions to get out of the way. If you're not already subscribed, it'd be awesome if you hit that subscribe button. It's just a quick, easy way to support the channel and we really appreciate it. In addition to releasing a deck tech every Monday, we also have a Commander gameplay series called Duel of the Peaks that we release monthly. If you haven't seen any of those videos, go ahead and check them out. We have built deck techs for all of the commanders that you see featured in those videos. All right, getting into today's episode, like I said, we're doing Yarrick the Desecrated. And if you're unfamiliar with Yarrick, the desecrated he costs two a green a blue and a black he is a legendary creature elemental horror he has death touch and lifelink and if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control the trigger that ability triggers an additional time so it's kind of like a panharmonicon on a creature except for it triggers for all permanents entering the battlefield whether it's under your opponent's control or your control as opposed to just creatures and artifacts entering under your control like panharmonicon and it's a creature so it's a little bit easier to deal with than Panharmonicon, but it's definitely a lot more abusable. So for this deck today, I have kept myself to a loose $75 budget. I kind of went over it, but my whole goal was I didn't include any card that costed over $6 at the time that I built the deck and recorded this episode. So I basically packed this list with as many good enter the battlefield triggered abilities that you would want to play anyways in a green, blue, black strategy. And I did this to adhere to another one of my rules is where I try to limit the amount of cards that are in the deck that are only useful or good when our commander is on the battlefield. So this deck is going to function pretty well, not fully optimal, but it's going to function really well without Yarrick and get super crazy good with Yarrick on the battlefield. So with that said, how is this deck looking to win? I've built this deck in a way that it's looking to win by outvaluing our opponents with Yarrick's ability and using that value to gain super powerful board states and either swinging in with a bunch of creatures or a couple powered up creatures. Besides our one overrun effect that we could find pretty easily with how much card draw we have, we also have, we're also playing some super huge creatures that could just swing in and win us the game. So to start things off, let's go over our ramp package. I'm playing roughly 19 to 20 ramp spells or ramp cards, which is about double what I would put in a normal deck because this deck really wants to get a lot of lands out and we have some pretty sweet payoffs for the lands. For the ramp and instants and sorceries we're running, Circuitous Root is gonna let us get any combination of two gates and or basic lands and put them into play. Cultivate's gonna get us a basic land to the field and to our hand. Farseek is going to get any land besides a forest and put it into play. Nature's Lore is going to let us get a forest card and put it into play. Rampant Growth like Nature's Lore is just going to get us any basic land to put into play. Sky Shroud Claim will get us two forests. Haro, we have to sacrifice a land, but we get two into play untapped and we can activate it at instant speed. And Grow from the Ashes is basically a cultivate until we pay the extra two mana to kick it, in which we can get two basic lands to put into play untapped. Next, we're playing some enchantments. We're playing Colony Heart Expedition, which whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, we can put a quest counter on Colony Heart Expedition. And with Yark, it's gonna trigger get two counters so we can kind of accelerate that a little bit quicker. We can then remove three counters from it, sacrifice it to find two basic lands to put into play. Just a powerful ramp spell. Next up, we're playing Omen of the Hunt, which is super cool because it's instant speed. When it enters the battlefield, we can search our library for a basic land and put it into play. It also has the added benefit of being able to pay two and a green to sacrifice it to scry two. And again, with Yara can play, uh, both of these spells get a lot stronger. We're then playing just some generic creature ramp with Elvish Mystic, Secura Tri Builder, and Arboreal Grazer, which Arboreal Grazer gets pretty good with Yarrick. We can put two lands into play. Then we're playing some a few more creatures that get a lot better with Yara can play with Coiling Oracle, Spring Bloom Druid, Farhaven Elf, Wood Elves, and Yavimaya Druid. Coiling Oracle is a little bit iffy on ramp. It can either be a ramp spell or a card draw spell, depending on what we hit off the top. And Spring Bloom Druid is just Haro on a stick, which gets really good with Yarrick, being able to get four lands into play at the cost of two. Farhaven Elf, Wood Elves, and Yavimaya Druid basically do the same thing of pulling lands from our library and putting them directly into play. Once we've ramped a lot, we want to start getting into our card draw. And one of the strengths of this deck is we can play creatures with powerful draw abilities and save those slots that we would otherwise have to spend on instants and sorceries that draw cards for more useful cards. We are a little light on card draw, but the card draw that we do have is incredibly powerful and repeatable. Dread Presence has two abilities whenever a swamp enters the battlefield under our control. We can either draw a card and lose a life, or alternatively, we could choose to have Dread Presence do two damage to any target and have us gain two life. Primarily, this is in the deck as a draw spell. Elvish Visionary enters the battlefield, draws us a card, kind of a cantrip unless we have Yarrick out and it's netting us some good cards. 
Mold Drifter, we can either hard cast it for its mana cost, or we can evoke it for two and a blue, which we have to sacrifice when it enters the battlefield. But when it enters the battlefield, we get to draw two cards. Again, with Yark, it'll give us four cards. And then Growth Spiral lets us draw a card and put a land from our hand into play. And the Wall of Blossoms, basically a second copy of Elvish Visionary, good blocker. Guardian Project, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, for all intents and purposes, it's going to draw us a card. And Soul of the Harvest, just another repeatable Guardian Project. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under our control, we're going to draw a card. Both of these effects get nuts with Yarrick out. We're going to be drawing a lot of cards and hitting more creatures to play, which just kind of spirals out of control. Then we're running Tatiova Benthic Druid, which is one of our payoffs for putting all those lands into play. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, we're going to draw a card and gain a life. That just gets a little out of control with Yarrick out. And then we're running probably one of my favorite cards in the deck, one of the, the cards I'm most excited to play, which is Sire of Stagnation. It's a big ol' Eldrazi that says whenever a land enters a battlefield under an opponent's control, that player exiles the top two cards of his or her library and you draw two cards. So our opponents are basically punished for playing lands and we get to profit hugely off that. Being able to draw four cards and exile four cards from our opponent's library just for them playing a land is awesome. In addition to some really powerful draw, we are playing two tutors, which kind of have specific cards that they want to grab in the deck to increase the consistency. We're playing Fierce Empath and Shared Summons. Fierce Empath for two and a green when it enters the battlefield, we can search our library for a creature that costs six or greater and put it right into our hand. With that, we're wanting to grab one of, you know, Sire Stagnation or maybe some of our other creatures that benefit from Landfall or maybe We've got some other powerful creatures in the deck that would be that we would be interested in getting. In addition to Fierce Empath, we're also playing Shared Summons, which is an instant speed tutor for three and two green. We can search our library for two creatures with different names and put them right into our hands, which is a super powerful tutor in green, especially with how much mana we're gonna be generating. And we'll go over the cards that we're going to want to grab with that a little bit later. And continuing along the card advantage, we are going to go over the spells in our deck that let us recur some things. So we're playing Omen of the Dead, Eternal Witness, Archaeomancer, and Ghostly Flicker. Omen of the Dead for one black mana gives us an enchantment that once it enters the battlefield, we can return a creature from our graveyard to our hand. It having flash is also super huge, and we can pay two and a black to sacrifice it and scry two. Next up is Eternal Witness, super classic card in green. When it enters the battlefield, we can return any card from our graveyard to our hand. Archaeomancer is the same, but only with instants and sorceries. Ghostly Flicker, I've put with a recursion because essentially it lets us reuse two of our enter the battlefield effects for our creatures, which is super huge late game. We could also use Ghostly Flicker as kind of a protection spell if an opponent tries to to remove some of our key pieces. The next category I'd like to talk about is the interaction. This deck is loaded with flexible interaction. We can basically deal with any type of card type outside of Planeswalkers, which I don't really plan for that in decks because I don't play against people that have a lot of Planeswalkers, but if your meta has a lot of Planeswalkers, you could probably just switch some of these cards out for some Planeswalker removal. But primarily we can deal with creatures super well. And of course, when we have our commander out, all of these effects just get so much better. So going over the cards that we have that can just straight up blow things up, we've got Acidic Slime, which when it enters the battlefield, it destroys target artifact, enchantment, or land. Specifically for creatures, we're playing Nauseous Gear Hulk, Ravenous Chupacabra, and Shriek Maw. Nauseous Gear Hulk, when it enters the battlefield, we can destroy another target creature, and we're gonna gain life equal to that creature's toughness. Ravenous Chupacabra, when it enters, we're just gonna destroy any creature, and Shriek Maw, just like Mole Drifter has that evoke ability, we can either cast it for its mana cost and let it stick, or we can evoke it to blow something up. And again, these abilities just get so much better with our commander out. Then we're playing Massacre Girl, which is not necessarily targeted removal, but when she enters the battlefield, each other creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. And whenever a creature dies this turn, each creature other than Massacre Girl gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. So this is kind of a, a board wipe, kind of depending on what's on the table, but with our commander out, it's definitely going to be a board wipe. I mean, it's just gonna kind of snowball out of control and all creatures are gonna get minus one, minus one, which is super good with dealing with creatures that have indestructible because they will die to the minus one, minus ones. One of the really powerful interaction pieces we have in this deck is Terastodon. It's a giant elephant that's a nine, nine, and when it enters the battlefield, we can blow up to three target non-creature permanents. And for each permanent destroyed this way, its controller gets a three, three green elephant for their troubles. And then we're playing the classic Acclamation Sage, which can deal with pesky artifacts and enchantments. Instance and Sorceries, we've got Putrefy, Death Sprout, and Nature's Claim. Putrefy can blow up an artifact or enchantment, can't be regenerated. Death Sprout kills any creature, and we can ramp. And Nature's Claim, for one mana, can blow up any artifact or enchantment. Besides killing things, we can also bounce things. We are playing Aether Adept, Mana War, Rivers Rebuke, and Devastation Tide. 
both Aether Adept and Mana War can come in and bounce any creature back to their owner's hands. And if we have our commander out, when we cast Aether Adept or Mana War, we can stack the triggers in such a way that we can bounce another creature and then bounce the Aether Adept or Mana War back to our hand. And we can kind of use this as a, we can kind of use this as an engine to replay multiple creatures. And as long as we have the mana to keep doing it. The board apps that we're playing are kind of mass bounce. River's Rebuke is awesome. We're going to just choose one one player and kind of send them back to the Stone Age, bouncing all of their non-land permanents back to their hand. And Devastation has a miracle cost, which is reduced to one and a blue, and it can bounce all non-land permanents back to their owner's hands. I've also put three counter spells into this deck, but really these are only to be used on board wipes. Or I guess other spells that might end the game, but they're in the deck primarily for board wipes because this deck is pretty susceptible to a board wipe. So Disdainful Stroke, Negate, and Unwind. Next up, we're just going to be going over the dedicated finishers in this deck. So the big finishers that we have in this deck are Rampaging Bayloths and Enraise Forerunners. So Rampaging Bayloths is one of our prime landfall payoffs. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, we may put a 4-4 green beast creature token into play. So whenever we're playing a land, if we have Yarrick out, we're going to get two. If not, we're just going to get one. And over a couple of turns, we're going to amass enough beasts to probably start swinging in and taking some people out. And then End Race Forerunners, massive eight drop boar, Vigilance, Trample Haste when it enters the battlefield. Other creatures we control get plus two, plus two, gain Vigilance and Trample until end of turn. So once we've built up a pretty big board state, maybe put into play a couple of tokens from our Rampaging Bailoths or maybe some of our other creature token makers, we can swing in for lethal, hopefully, and just take all of our opponents out at once. And I talked about shared summons earlier, letting us grab two creatures from our deck with different names at instant speed. These are probably the two that we want to grab most of the time, but it just kind of depends on the situation. The last category is kind of a catch all because this category is reserved for cards that didn't fit super well in one of the categories above or that I felt warranted a bit more of an explanation. Spark Double we can use in a couple of ways. We can use it to give ourselves a second Yarrick because when it enters the battlefield, it can become a copy of any creature we control. And if it's a legendary creature, it loses the legendary creature card type, which having two Yarricks in play at the same time is probably game ending. You could just outvalue your opponent so fast in one turn or we could use it to get a second use out of one of our creatures that have a good ETB. I know that I said Sire Stagnation was my favorite card, but Villainous Wealth comes super close. For X, blue, green, and a black, target player exiles the top X cards of his or her library, and we may cast any number of non lad cards with converted mana cost X or less from among them without paying their mana cost. If we can, which shouldn't be super difficult, put 15 mana into X, we're gonna cast so many cards from our opponent's libraries and that will probably result in a game ending board state. Villainous Wealth is just one of those super cool commander cards that you can you never know what you're gonna get. It's such a cool card. The next two cards, Hostage Shaker and Zendikar's Royal, are two of the cards that I consider to be decent in this deck, but a lot better when we have a commander out. And if you're looking for cards to replace in the deck, these are probably the, the two cards that I would cut. But Hostage Taker, when it enters the battlefield, you can exile another target artifact or creature until Hostage Taker leaves the battlefield, and you can cast that card for as long as it remains exiled, and you can spend mana of any color to cast it. It's pretty good. Um, we can take a pesky artifact or creature that an opponent controls. You don't even have to recast it if you don't want it on the battlefield, if it's like a hate piece. But if it is something that you want, you can just go ahead and cast it. Zendikar's Royal is kind of a pricey effect. Um, for three green green, we get an enchantment that says whenever a land enters battlefield under your control, we can put a two two green elemental creature token onto the battlefield. We are playing a lot of ramp and we probably could generate a lot of tokens with this, but it just, like I said, it gets so much better with Yarrick out. Otherwise, it's kind of an awkward mana cost because by the time we hit five mana, like we've cast, we've ca we've already casted a lot of our ramp spells, and so we might not profit too much off of it. But it's still a good card. Another interesting card in this deck is the Dream Stalker. Uh, it functions similarly to the Aether Adept and the Mana War, except for Dream Stalker can't target our opponent's creatures. We have to bounce a creature we control. But like I said with the other ones, when it comes into play, we target Dream Stalker with its ability and another creature that has a powerful ETB bounce them both back to our hand and recast them. It works really well with Archaeomancer or uh, Eternal Witness letting us get cards back from our graveyard. So Dream Stalker can kind of help recur, but I think it's just a pretty good value engine. We're then playing Cloud of Fairies, which falls into the category with Zendikar's Royal and Hostage Taker as really only being relevant with our commander out. 
but it's really good when we have Yark. It's good enough with Yark out that I it definitely belongs in the deck, and we can kind of use it as a pseudo ritual because when it comes into play, we can untap two lands. Yark will see that, so we'll get two Cloud of Fairy triggers. So we can tap an extra two lands and float that mana when it comes into play, and then untap those lands so we've netted some mana can help us probably curve out a lot better than we could otherwise and maybe cast some bigger spells earlier than we could have before. And then the last card that we're gonna be talking about is Golgari Charm, which is basically in this deck as another way of protecting our board from a board wipe. It's got two other modes on it. It can give all creatures minus one, minus one until end of turn, and we can destroy target enchantment, which that could be relevant, but primarily, like I said, it's in the deck to soften the blow from a board wipe. And with that, the Yarek deck is completed. Thank you guys so much for making it this far into the video. We really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments below if there are any cards that you'd, you'd like to see in this deck or cards that you're playing in your Yarek deck. Like I said earlier in the video, I tried to hold myself to a $75 budget as kind of like an experiment to see if it's something that I wanted to do in the future. And I didn't put any cards in the deck that costed over $6 at the time I built the deck and recorded the video. Um, there were, I kind of noticed that a lot of dedicated strategies for Yarrick were pretty pricey. And I kind of refused to accept that you would have to spend that much money to build a powerful Yarrick deck. And I've been playtesting this deck a lot and it's pretty strong. It gets out of hand pretty quick. So hopefully if you build the deck, you find it to be that strong too. Just one more reminder before I leave you guys, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you like this deck and you want to see more. We release deck techs every Monday and we will be releasing one commander gameplay video per month. Thank you guys so much and I hope you have a great day.